Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Back with us at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Fausto Puglisi, he's the founder of Cyber Trading University. We're going to run through how to use NASDAQ Total View, how traders use this platform, and also run through a number of stocks that have certainly been moving the tape over the past couple of weeks. Fausto, as always, great to have you back with me at Market Site. Let's run through what Total View is and how traders are using it. Absolutely, Jill. So basically, what we got right here is uh, we're looking at a stock right here showing you how Total View works. Now, I've been using Total View since the day it ever came out. And the thing that you have to be careful when using Total View is more or less how to set it up. So if you notice, I have three very important columns. Now, let me just explain a little bit more what Total View is. First of all, this is a full depth of book. This gives you 20 times more data than Level 2 does. Level 2 to me is personally been out of business since the 90s. So Total View is the way you're supposed to look at it. You basically shows you every single quote at every single price level. And the big thing about it, people always look at it and want to know, how do you, get, how do you see pre-market, aftermarket? And this is where you get the Total view, uh, view of all the trades. Now, basically what you're looking at, regarding about all the data that you're getting, you're seeing all the full book of orders, you have basically, I aggregate the orders, so you can see right here, there's like eight orders, seven orders, four orders. This is the sellers and these are the buyers. So you basically could see who's looking to buy for the most, who wants to buy uh, for the least. So now you're just basically seeing everything that's out there, all the buyers, all the sellers, which once again, how do things go up? Supply and demand, and now you're getting to see it in total view. All right, let's go to our next chart here where we're looking at buyers, which of course is support on AMD. And again, AMD, one of the most widely traded stocks on the NASDAQ 100 that's always uh, within the top five when it comes to volume and order flow. And the question was, how much lower can it go? Well, it looks like if you take a look at Total exactly. View, it well, gives you that example. The big thing is here, is Jill, is that people realize, like, okay, when's a good time to buy it? And everybody likes to look at a chart, but nobody realizes, well, what makes a support level on a chart? It's buyers. So how do you justify that? The problem with a chart, it's the past. It's not the future. This is basically you're looking at the orders of the future. So to kind of justify it, that looks like a support level. It's hovering right around 39.50. If you look down here at the buyers and you work your way down, and then bam, then you see, oh my God, what the hell is that? Is a 50,000 air share buyer at 39.47? Definitely explains to you why that there's a support level, and that's why it goes from 39.50 all the way to 40.10. All right, let's go to the flip side, sellers, which of course is resistance with Apple. And again, there's that question, how much higher can Apple go? And if I take a look at Total View on our next slide here. All right, there we go. So everybody wants to know, okay, what, what, how do I understand how to trade Apple? Listen, you could apply this to any stock, okay? So we're looking at Apple right here, and even Apple has that resistance level. So here you're looking at all these different orders, two, five, 10, how many shares are looking to be bought? at what price. But the big thing is, when you're looking over here and you work your way down, 265, 34,000 shares, definitely explains to you why the stock literally went from 20, 20, uh, 263 all the way up to just right above 265 and right back down. Remember, to be a good day trader, what we usually look for, we look for support and resistance and we look for buyers and sellers. And when you're looking over here, the only way to explain it, even with Apple, you can even see it. All right, and just to recap here for everyone watching, if we click through one time, we'll see the arrow pop up of where the most volume was, and we click through again, it's also going to show you another arrow where we have resistance right up there. Moving along to Roku, why is Roku trending down? <laughs> well, obviously, people are selling, so if we take you next arrow, we'll see exactly where that level is, and then we'll slide to our next chart, and we'll take a look at total. So view. what happens when you have a 128,000 share buyer in Roku? So everybody's like, okay, what, what, like you're looking at it and say, oh, well, these are 200 shares, 300 shares. But then when you work all the way down there, if you do the math, there are 35 different orders out there that make up 128,000 shares. So in theory, what would you call that? That's called the demand. What does that make a supply on a chart? That will usually help to trend it back up. All right, we'll take some more of a look on Roku. Going to our next chart over here. All right, and there we go. Now we have all of our hours in place and here. And you can see how Roku just hit the bottom and just shot right back up the whole way to 159.50. All right, advance one more time. We'll show that arrow. And then going to our next chart, Disney. Can't stop talking about the house of mouth. <laughs> Disney's doing great. I love Disney. You know, after, I feel like Disney's going to be probably the next uh, thorn of uh, Netflix. Uh, so anyway, making new highs, what would the chart uh, basically tell you here? So what would you think? Most people are like, oh, the stock's going up, right? Trend's going up, great looking stock. Well, the question everyone always asks, when do I get out? When, it, when is resistance levels? When, when do I take a profit? So the only thing that makes that is sellers. You can't see that on a chart, but when you go to total view, which you go to the next slide. 
Yep, if we go to our next slide here, total view is telling us that story. We could click through one more time. We'll show that arrow. There we go. Boom, there it is. There you see a big seller right there, sitting at 149 for over 59,000 shares. And you could see it right here. The stock hit that resistance level and came right back down to 148. And if you do the math, as a trader, especially specifically as a day trader, when you're looking at this, you're like, you know, that's a nice little profit from 148 to 149.50. But how do you salvage profits? By knowing where the sellers are at all times. All right, let's go along to our next chart because we hear this all the time. There's fake orders out there. There's they, I hear it all the time, Jill. So people tell me all the time, how do you know these are real orders, okay? First of all, I tell, I tell my students, I say, listen, you want how real it is? You come to my trading room, I'll find that guy, and let's see if you execute and you tell me how fake it is. All right, so they're all real. Uh, now, can somebody cancel an order? Absolutely. There's this other window that you're supposed to be trading with the, time, with, the, with the book viewer, which is called the time and sales. A lot of people neglect the time and sales window because those are the confirmations of the transactions that take place. So could anyone change their mind and cancel it? Uh, cancel? Of course they could. they could. Anyone. You could do it. I could do it. Anyone could do it. But how do you know that someone got really executed? Well, that's where the time and sales is, and that's called tape reading. That's what, we, that's what most day traders are. We're really tape readers. Mm -hmm. So how do we justify it? By following that time and sales window. All right. Let's go to our last chart here. Again, looking at Apple for time and sales. So once again, you're looking at the stock and you want to kind of justify how do you know the stock is going up? How do you know that seller got done? Remember, we saw a big seller out there. Well, look over here. Look at all the transactions. Boom, 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 boom. And that's why the stock, you know, Apple just literally just took off and went from 20, uh, 264 to 260. Because people are always asking, well, how do you know that seller's going to get done? How do you know he's not getting executed? You have to look at those orders, just like over here. If you see right here on the sell side, though, here's a, a big seller out there for 34000 That's why it backed off over there. And look at all the transactions. Uh, purple, red, actually it's called purple lightning, bleeding. <laughs> not too many greens. Yeah. And that too gives indication that stock's going lower and that guy's actually getting executed. All right. Well, I suspect next time you're here for our, our next segment on Total Vu, we'll be talking about some of the retail stocks as we're going through holiday 2019. Some of the questions, when does it make sense to buy the department stores and when do you start to sell out on the discounters and the online retailers? No problem. All right, Fausto, as always, thanks so much for joining us at thanks Market for Site. Me. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.